It's a great pleasure to welcome to the jock line a gentleman who will be uh, keeping his team on the gridiron at least for one week longer, and maybe who knows what, then. The Buffalo Bison have had a great year this year. Coach Eddie Phillips has been kind enough to uh, come in and visit with us. Coach, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Everything going okay? Well, thank you for having us, and yeah, it's always good to be playing right now, that's for sure. Uh, that That it is. This is the state quarterfinals coming up this um, this weekend, and indeed, your game is, all right, yeah, this like game, Cassville. Yeah, Cassville uh-huh. is coming up. It's a game that we're going to have here on the uh, on the Jock Network. Tell us a little bit about how you have perceived this season, Eddie, and 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 what you think is going to happen. I obviously you're you're optimistic about it, but in in that regard, what do you think? Well, first off, you know, with the pandemic going on, we we didn't know you know from week to week what was going to happen, and we were always hopeful that uh, we were going to get the year in, and and we made it all the way through the season and got to the district championship game and made it through that that game for the first time in over 20 years and and we're excited about that but we're also excited to keep playing and and we're excited about playing a top-notch program like uh Cassville. that'll be a, a saturday game too down in Cassville. the the buffalo team this year did it achieve the the goals that you had set for it at the start of the year Oh yeah, obviously we wanted to, you know, we've been to the district championship games two previous years and we uh, came up short. So, you know, before the pandemic hit in 2020, when we started the new year with our new team, we wanted to uh, break through that door, break through the wall of, of uh, where we had, had fallen short in the previous years and, and get a district title here for not only our seniors, but for our town and our, our school and our community. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I believe our team has, has achieved. We, uh, we had to uh, replace five starting offensive linemen this year. We had to replace uh, our front seven defense, um, D-line and linebackers. So it was, it, it, was a, it was a daunting task to get to this point, but our kids overachieved, or achieved uh, greatly this year. And uh, I think it's a tribute to the hard work they put in you know, a district championship doesn't you know, happen that night. It happens with the work they do in the weight room and, and what they do on the practice field over the years and, and even before that as, as they prepare and, uh, as youth and, and junior high all the way through. So uh, to say they achieved our goals, this was a goal that we wanted to do. We wanted to be playing here in November and, and playing this game, and, and we're happy to be here. I can't remember what I uh, what I picked you in the magazine when you were down for our uh, our cover shot. I think it was seven and two, if I remember correctly. Tell the folks what you are right now. Yeah, uh, we're nine and two. So you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's so so rewarding to hear that uh, your team has has come back. Because let, let's face it, uh, before Coach Phillips came in there, Buffalo it had some really lean lean football years. Well, not only that. Uh, Coach Stratton here, Coach Phillips, congratulations on what you're doing. Had the opportunity to watch you guys play a couple of times with the relatives coaching over at Marshfield, so I know I've seen it. Your kids are tenacious on defense. They fly to the ball. And uh, now that you guys have gotten yourself in this position, especially against uh, uh, Cassville, I'm sure the town, with everything that's happened up there uh, economically in the community and all the things – I'm sure they're rallying around the uh, football team in the high school. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, but again, this is this is something long, long coming. Um, oh, yeah. These guys that that did this, they prepared their whole life for this, and uh, they wanted to be the ones to uh, change it here in Buffalo, to change the the culture and to change the uh, the. Uh, uh, the, the history and they did that and and again it's it's the hard work that they put in and uh, our community has rallied behind us and we've always had great support here uh, ever since I've been here and, and uh, the community is it rallies and they love bison football and, and it's great to see the passion that they have the, and um, yeah there's a lot of good things happening here at Buffalo with a new uh, building being built here a new, right. new park to our high school we just uh, had a new field and track put in, so and new stadium uh, two years ago. So, it, it, there's a lot of good things happening here in our program, and we're we're happy that the success on the field is shown too. 
Coach, as it is, it's showing itself now, and you have a team in the state quarterfinals, but it hasn't always been there. Now, when you took over the program up there, I'm sure it was down in the down in the depths. Uh, what did you, first of all, were you reluctant to take over in a program like that, and what specifically did you do to, to raise the level of expectation? Well, first off, I, I just say that you don't do this by yourself. We have, uh, you know, again, the, there's good players here, and what we needed to do is we wanted to we wanted to come in with a mindset that uh, everything matters, uh, that that we have to be disciplined in what we do and committed to uh, working hard to to uh, getting better every day. Uh, we didn't really even talk about the scoreboard or, or anything like that because success is not what you, what you do on a Friday night; it's what you do every day. And so we talked about how to be successful. We talked about working hard and and uh, being disciplined on and off the field and, and being good people and good students. And, and um, you know, we're just uh, committing to the weight room and to practice and changing the way we practiced and, and uh, you know, just, just keeping uh, – just making sure that we do all the little things and, and take care of what we can control and not try to control other things. And, and so that's kind of what we tried to do. But we wanted to be disciplined in what we did. Uh, we wanted to work hard, and we work really hard in the weight room, and our kids have bought into that. And I think that shows with the, the speed and the strength that we have. Um, and, uh, of course, you've got to have players that are, are pretty good, and we've got some pretty good players here that, that help, help the process along. So, uh, but we've had buy-in from, uh, from our kids, and that's, that's something that uh, without that you can't go very far. And I, I'm very appreciative that they uh, – you know, believed in me enough to uh, listen to what we were trying to do, and they they worked extremely hard to get to this point. Coach, tell us about your. Uh, go ahead and give us the full game plan on how you're going to beat Cassville. Now. <laughs> give it to well, us can, straight. You're going to open up with an onside kick. Try. What are you going to do? <laughs> We're going to try to score more points than they are. Yeah, that, yeah. That's what we're going to try to do. So. Yeah, back when I was uh, coaching baseball, I'd always say to everybody, hey, we're just looking for one run, the one that wins. <laughs> that's right. One point that wins it. That's one point will win it. So uh, now are you, uh, are you hosting the, uh, the game, or will you go down to Cassville? No. No, we're going down to Cassville. So okay. it'll be a great atmosphere. They always have a great oh, yeah. atmosphere down there. and. And uh, we're, like I said, we're excited about playing a top-notch program, and they, they have that. Um, they, you know, they've been in the state championship game, and they've got a great history down there, and and uh, they're, a, a, you know, a continual power every year. Uh, they're well coached, got a great coaching staff, a lot of respect for them and what sure. they do, and uh, they've got. Um, it's always always good to go into Casper, so. Uh, hopefully we uh, go in and, and and do what we need to do, come out with a win. You know, Coach, uh, <laughs> back a number of years ago when I was still at KY3, uh, Cashville played Lutheran North for the state championship. Right. So I sent the reporter, uh, Joe Hickman, up and I said, hey, this will be over real quick because Lutheran North is going to run this team right out of the ballpark. He calls me <laughs> a little bit later on. He says, Reynolds, the uh, final score was uh, 31 to nothing. And, well, they took it easy. No, Reynolds, Cassville won the game. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, yeah. They, yeah. They have, it's, a, it's a tough level of football down there, but obviously so is Buffalo. And when you took it over, uh, did you – First of all, what was the what was the overall mindset of the kids, and how many did you have turn out for football? Well, let's see. That first year, we um, we I think we had fifty five come out for football. So uh, it was a uh, there was a there was a, a you know I, I came in from Branson, so uh, they they came out. Uh, we had fifty five start the season. I think we finished with around fifty. Uh, that year, and and we uh, we won we won three games. We were three and seven, and that we had opportunity to win a couple more, and we just didn't know how to do that. And so, um, the next years, um, obviously, we moved into another conference. Uh, we moved away from the COC and moved into another conference that helped us a lot. And uh, um, we just kind of build it from there. And I, I think that first year, the the truth is that the first year we got in the weight room and we had some good players coming up. Um, that were young and they played as, as freshmen and sophomore uh, that first year, a lot of them. And uh, I think we started three offensive linemen 
that were sophomores, and we had a freshman starting, and uh, that freshman is Jamin Smith, who's now a senior, and he's been a three-year starter at quarterback and had just a phenomenal career here at Buffalo and probably one of the best players that's ever walked the halls of Buffalo. So um, just a just a great, great uh, career that he had, but uh, we started a, a lot of young kids, and we had opportunities to win several games and just couldn't get it done. Um, but then that off season, they, they – dedicated to the weight room and we dedicated to what we were trying to do and they saw um they saw the 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 benefit of the hard work the next year again we got into the new conference and and that helped us out a lot and and um we played pretty good football from that point on we made it to the district championship game with a young team that was juniors and sophomores and and uh, then the next year we we made it to the district championship game again and got beat by a really good Blair Oaks team and took another step forward I felt like and um, this year, uh, our skill kids were all back, and, and they were grown up, and and uh, they're, you know, you still have a veteran quarterback, and 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 in our offensive line gelled together, and 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 here we are. So, uh, it's it's been a process, but uh, having good players that are dedicated and committed is is the key, and 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 uh, like I said, I think that started way back in Mighty Mites, to be honest with you. So these kids wanted to change it and wanted to get things done. So, and they, they came to do it. So. The, uh, the whole circumstance up there it, it, at Buffalo is very interesting because it, it, it requires a special level of teaching. When you take over a program that's been downtrodden, I don't mean that to be insulting in any way, but it, the mindset that you have to change, did you use any special technique or anything of that nature to overcome that level of negativity? Well, you know, truthfully, every day in the weight room, we had a, we started every day with some kind of positive talk, you know, and that was something that we tried to do, just not to allow negative thoughts to be in our, in our mindset. We just, we wanted to have a, you know, a growth mindset all the way through and, and we wanted to talk about success and then talk about how to get there. And it, it, it all comes down to a couple of things that successful people work hard. And that's, that's one, one characteristic of a successful person. And, and so we, we tried to start there and that's we want, you know, we worked them extremely hard and that, that was something that I feel like they responded well to. And, and, and then we just talked about, you know, caring about everything, being a good student, you know, being a, a leader in the, in the hallways. And we had a, you know, we had leadership classes that we, all our players had to go through. And I feel like that was very beneficial that they, we talked about what, what successful people do and then what, uh, you know, people that don't succeed do, you know, and we wanted to make sure there was, they, they learned the difference between the two and, and uh, there is, it's a, it's characteristics of successful people. It, it's something they do every day. And we've never talked about the scoreboard or, or anything like that, because if you, if you win a game, you're, you're sometimes just better than the other team, but what we do daily makes us successful or not. So, and that's something that we just tried to teach and, and change. And, and again, we had a, we had something positive. We tried to talk about if I ever heard anything negative, I tried to stop right then and change that. <laughs> um, and uh, change that mindset I, again. Like you said, it, it it is a mindset, and and but we had some kids that were young that that were hungry and wanted to uh, wanted to do this, and were very talented, and they bought into what we were trying to do. And and uh, as we go through it, we have we have pillars of our program that we talk about, and and we talk about all the time, and and those those. Pillars have nothing to do with winning a game. It's it's winning today, and that's that's what we try to do. So that's, win the day. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And here's here's Coach Stratton over here and nodding his head. And yeah. Earl Jones. Hey, it's a mindset. Yeah. If it's easy, everybody be doing it. I don't know if you noticed, Coach. <laughs> There's only about <laughs> yeah. how many teams left? Four, six, eight. I mean, come on, yeah. man. If it, yeah. I've always said, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And luck's got nothing to do no, with it. No, man. no, it's it's the amount of sure. that you put yeah. into it. Well, you head down right. there now. now. That's a long haul, Buffalo down to Cassville. That's not an easy trip at all. What time will you leave? Well, I think we're going to leave around eight forty-five in the morning and um, and go and see what we can do. <laughs> there's there's the answer right there. And see what you can do. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself, Eddie, and and uh, how you got into coaching and what your background is. Well, uh, I'm originally from Buffalo, so coming back here, is, it was, um, you know, you, you ask why, why was, 
was it reluctance to come back here? And the answer is no. I, you know, I feel like that I had good years here, you know, and, and maybe we weren't successful, but uh, I think it, it, it built me into the person that I am walking these halls and being in this town and being around this community and, and um, going out into coaching. I, I, I uh, came right out of college and I was coaching at Lockwood, Missouri uh, way back in the nineties. And, and um, then I went North to Knob Noster and was head coach up there for a little while. And, I uh, got the opportunity to probably the biggest thing that happened to me. I got to uh, coach with Coach Steve Hancock and Branson and and um, had the opportunity to be his D coordinator for seven years and strength coach. And, and that was just a great time down there and, and uh, a learning experience as, as being around a Hall of Fame coach like him and just how to handle yourself and how, how to treat others. And he's just a phenomenal guy, and I just respect him so much and what he did for my career. And then had the opportunity to come back here to Buffalo and, and um, felt like it was uh, a great opportunity to come back and just, uh, just to give back to uh, people that, that, you know, kind of made me who I am. And so, um, you know, maybe be, be that person for somebody here. And that's kind of, that's kind of what, you know, led me back here. And um, it's been a, it's been a good ride since. So, uh, I feel like it was a great decision, not just because we're in the game today, but it's just uh, been a great decision coming back. What was your college background? How did you get involved in coaching? Well, I went to Southwest Baptist, and um, I actually had the opportunity to coach before I graduated. Um, They were needing a coach, a um, hardship coach, and I got the opportunity to coach here at Buffalo uh, for a couple of years, and then um, I really – you know, I always want, I always loved sports and want to be around it and uh, work with kids and, and have that opportunity to uh, be around kids and, 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 and teach and, and coach. And, and they gave me an opportunity to do that. And, and then uh, I got the opportunity to go to Lockwood from there and be a head coach. And I really started learning a lot once you become the head coach. And, and you learn a lot from your failures, that's for sure. And I, I learned a lot from that. So. <laughs> I think we all. Uh, what, uh, what sport personally did you excel the most? Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I probably track. I was a, um, I was decent at track. Um, I, I played football and I enjoyed it and loved it. And, and, um, I've really enjoyed coaching it, um, played basketball as well. And I, I probably basketball was the one I liked the most. And, um, but I, I got, like I said, I got the opportunity to coach football and I just fell in love with it. And, um, that's, uh, that's where I've been. So I did get the opportunity to run track in college there at SBU. And, and, um, it's just been a, it's been a blessing ever since. So. See, there's, that's the beauty, guys, of uh, individuals who get involved in athletics. It isn't just one sport. It's, it's, it's all-encompassing, and that's, that's what makes the true individual who's involved in athletics so very important to the teaching of the kids. Coach, I know you've got other things to do. Get your team ready for the ball game on Saturday. Kicking off at 1 o'clock, is that correct? That is correct, yes. And you will be down in Castle to take on the Castle Wildcats. Formidable, formidable game indeed. We will see you down there. We have that game here on the on the Jock Network. Eddie, thank you very much for visiting with us, and much good luck coming up on Saturday. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on.